Great, thank you. Um, so uh, I'm Alex, and I've been working on um, a RISC V backend for LVM, which I wanted to talk a little bit about today. Um, so first of all, what is RISC V? RISC V is a free and open instruction set architecture originally developed at UC Berkeley. Um, so in comparison to many other ISAs, you don't need any license. There are no concerns about going and paying someone to implement it. It has Linux, QMU, FreeBSD, SEL4, Coreboot, GCC, port, etc. Um, it has support for 32-bit or 64-bit um, register, register length. It's also designed to have a modular specification, meaning it can scale down to the microcontroller class implementation, as well as up to um, something of much higher performance, something with atomic instructions, floating points, vector instruction sets, extensions, and the like. And you can find out much more about it at risk5.org. Um, but now I'll you know, focus a little bit more about the work I've been doing with it. So. Clearly, I've said, you know, it's, a, it's an instruction set. It's designed to be very clean and modular, so we could just um, write an LVM backend, upstream it, and call it a day. But I think there's actually a greater opportunity here. Um, this is, um, you know, in the RISC V world, there are a number of us working on open source hardware platforms, so producing free and open implementations of that ISA, um, both in industry and in research. And so there's an opportunity to facilitate the kind of hardware, software, co-design, and research that people are performing. And that requires, um, yes, it requires that the tool actually exists in the first place, but also requires um, documentation so that you know a small computer architecture research team who aren't familiar with LLVM can easily get involved and dig in and make the changes that they require to test whether you know, their new fancy you know, poster and commenting load instruction is actually worthwhile. And it's also, of course, an opportunity to improve, improve LLVM documentation for the wider community. You know, we've had um, you know, very valuable contributions, such as the, um, the work on leg from CodePlay or the CPU Zero work and going way back the um, MSP430 tutorial. Um, but I think um, we can use a, a real ISA that is, um, has wide um, industry interest, even if there aren't yet shipping devices, as well as something that's being adopted by academia. And it seems that this is the right starting point for something that can act as a reference LVM backend for anybody who wants to work on, um, on uh, that aspect of LVM. And so my approach to this has been to um, take the extra time to write um, very incremental, easily reviewable patches, um, slightly uh, differently versus uh, a number of other LVM ports. I've started with the MC layer and have been doing code gen after. Uh, this actually seems to, been work seems to be working quite well. It's particularly useful given that the GCC port already exists and is quite stable. So it means that we can easily cross-validate against the existing GCC and binutils implementation. And we'll see how well this works out over the longer term. It may drive me you know, crazy, um, but I'm also hoping to maintain the patch set separately as a living artifact, even after merging. And by that, I mean continually refreshing it, um, integrating later bug fixes so that, I mean, as for many of us who start to work, add something new to a project that perhaps doesn't have a documentation we want, we'll often look at the most recently added um, port, whether it's the Linux kernel port or LVM port. But I want to maintain a patch set so that it can always act as that reference alongside kind of documentation that explains the design decisions made and how you can um, get involved with that. So if you want to see that patch set, um, you can, uh, it's all being, every, there's a, a set of 10 patches that are up for review on reviews.lvm.org. Uh, most of them, um, I think about half of them have been merged and most of them have been accepted now, so that should finish up soon. And I've also have them up on GitHub where I hope to maintain them as this living document. Um, so I'm shortly, in the next couple of weeks, I should start to post some basic uh, code gen patches. I just want to make sure that I'm happy with the approach I'm taking so I don't waste reviewer time going back and forth. Um, I have copious notes in terms of the documentation and tutorial that I hope to achieve. Um, those need to be cleaned up a little bit and shared. And in the future, we, of course, can work on completing code gen, um, other LVM tools, uh, RISC V also has a compressed instruction set for better um, code size optimization, so 16 bit encoding. And I think there's something really interesting in terms of looking at the proposals for RISC V vector extensions. Many people in the room are compiler engineers who have um, probably torn their hair out at various times trying to work with um, vector ISAs. And here we have an opportunity with a, an open ISA with feedback loop where we can implement it. Um, look at how well various proposals work, and then feedback to people who are trying to um, who are trying to specify that architecture. 
And so if you'd like to get involved, come and chat with me. Um, reviewing patches is always useful. And uh, take a look at this RFC on my mailing list regarding implementing variable size register classes, which is a very useful way of reducing code duplication for uh, instruction sets that reuse the same instruction encoding across different register lengths. Thank you very much. Thank you.